In this lecture, we will discuss ST elevation and depression in myocardial ischemia, including various ST segment morphologies, EKG criteria, and common pitfalls. ST depression that is caused by myocardial ischemia can have a characteristic morphology. It is characterized by either horizontal or downsloping ST depression. The horizontal ST depression is considered more specific than the downsloping ST depression. So if you look here, we can see that the ST segment is depressed. Remember here, imagine we have a P wave here. We're using our PR segment, which is this portion here as our baseline. Okay, and you can see that with all of these here, we have ST depression. In this case, we're saying that it's horizontal, okay? So notice that it's flat, and then the one next to it is, so it's flat here, and this one's downsloping, okay? And we're saying that this horizontal one is more specific for ischemia, but both of them represent ischemic ST depression. Now, recent guidelines define ischemic ST depression as new horizontal or downsloping ST depression greater than or equal to 0.5 millimeters in at least two anatomically contiguous leads. For example, leads 2, 3, and AVF are all inferior leads, so you would need to have at least two of these three inferior leads, okay, for it be, to be considered ischemic ST depression, okay? You can also have leads 1 and AVL, right, are high lateral or lateral leads that may suggest it, okay? So it's horizontal or downsloping ST depression of 0.5 millimeters in at least two anatomically contiguous leads, okay, that they're close to each other. So again, we'd want at least 0.5 millimeters of depression in that case. Now, ischemic ST depression can occur in STEMI, ST elevation MI, can occur in NSTEMI, the non-ST elevation MI, and unstable angina pectoris. However, its clinical significance differs significantly between STEMI and the others. For instance, ST depression in the setting of NSTEMI, or unstable uh, angina pectoris, are primary ischemic changes and often associated with T-wave inversion or flattening. On the other hand, ST depression in the setting of STEMI is a secondary ischemic change, while the primary ischemic change is the ST elevation. Remember, ST depression in ST elevation MI are reciprocal or mirror changes to the elevated ST segment. Now, if you see upsloping ST depression, this is rarely the result of ischemia. That is, unless they occur with prominent T waves in most of the precordial leads, in which case they may suggest an acute LAD or left anterior descending occlusion. That's referred to as a de Winter sign. Oftentimes, upsloping ST depression is a normal physiologic finding during exercise, and it should generally be considered normal so long as there's no associated T wave inversion. If there is upsloping ST depression during exercise, the depression in the J60 point, okay, 60 milliseconds after that J point, is typically less than one millimeter and resolves once exercise is completed. So let's take a look at that upsloping ST depression. So here's the upsloping ST depression, again, depressed below baseline, and you can see how it's going up, sloping up towards our T wave, okay? And we're saying this is normally not ischemic, okay? So these two cases, horizontal and downsloping ST depression, tend to be more ischemic changes, okay? Whereas this one is non-ischemic, okay? unless you have the de Winter sign, and we'll talk about that more in another lecture. Okay, let's move on to ST elevation in the setting of ischemia. So acute transmural ischemia often shows convex, straight upsloping, straight horizontal, or straight downsloping ST elevation. So if you look here, we can see those four types. Here's the convex ST elevation. So again, here's our elevated ST segment, or from our J point, okay? And notice that this one is convex going in this direction. Again, that sad phase. So again, this is a sign of ischemia. Then we have the straight upsloping, okay? Again, elevated ST segment, and this one is going straight up, okay? Another sign of ischemia. Then we have the straight horizontal ST elevation, and then that horizontal flat ST segment. Then we also have the straight downsloping, again, ST elevation, and in this case, now it's going down. So all of these four types are signs of ischemia. If you see concave ST elevation, this is less likely due to ischemia, but does not rule it out. This is because concave ST elevation is actually common in the general population, especially in young males. In fact, the majority of males less than 30 years of age have concave ST elevation in leads V2 and V3. These benign concave ST elevations also have greater distance between the J point and the T wave apex. Furthermore, concave ST elevation may be seen more prominently or may be more prominent when we have these 
tall T waves, such as in hyperkalemia, early repolarization, or early phases of ischemia. Just remember that concave ST elevation is atypical of ischemia, but does not rule it out. So again, this is the concave, okay, ST elevation. It's going like this. You can think of it as almost like a smiley face, so that suggests no ischemia, all right? So again, the ischemic ones are here on the left, those that are typically non-ischemic on the right side. Now, recent guidelines define ischemic ST elevation based on age and sex. They require ST elevation with the following changes in at least two anatomically contiguous leads. In men, 40 years of age and older, ischemic ST elevation is considered greater than or equal to two millimeter, millimeters in leads V2 and V3 and greater than or equal to one millimeter in all the other leads. In men less than 40 years of age, ischemic ST elevation is considered greater than or equal to 2.5 millimeter in leads V2 and V3 and greater than or equal to one millimeter in all the other leads. Now in women of any age, ischemic ST elevation is considered greater than or equal to 1.5 millimeter in leads V2 and V3 and greater than or equal to one millimeter in all the other leads. Now in terms of leads V3R and V4R, okay, these are the right-sided precordial leads, okay, if we put them on the right side of the chest, if we see them as ischemic ST elevation in men and women is considered greater than or equal to 0.5 millimeters, except in men who are less than 30 years of age in whom it is greater than or equal to one millimeter. And in the posterior leads, V7 through V9, ischemic ST elevation in men and women is considered greater than or equal to one millimeter. So all of these criteria are listed here for you to review or reference. Notice that the ST elevation requirements for ischemia are greater in leads V2 and V3 than any other leads. This is because concave ST elevation is very common in the general population, as we mentioned, especially in young men. You should also note that ST elevation in ischemia is a dynamic process in which the ST elevation may not fulfill the criteria initially, although within minutes the ST elevation may reach ischemic limits. Therefore, connecting the patient to a continuous monitor in order to detect such changes is really helpful. All right, so some other features of ischemic ST elevation include a J point that is close to the height of the level or the height of the T wave apex, okay? So if you look here, what we mean by that, okay, is if you had the J point. So let's just draw something out for you. Okay. So our J point is where our ST segment begins. So it'd be this point here. We're saying if it's raised up to this point, okay. So imagine you have ST elevation and it's at the same level of our T wave apex. Okay. So if it's around the same height, that may indicate uh, ischemia. Okay. Where we have, uh, we can see that uh, with the horizontal ST depression, notice that, let me just erase that for you here. Okay, so notice we have our J point here, pretty much at the same level of our T waves apex. Okay, so a sign of ischemia. In addition, ischemic ST elevation is often associated with reciprocal ST depression, which strongly suggests transmural ischemia. It's also important to be aware that reciprocal ST depression may not be present. Some scenarios include, uh, there's one case when there's no lead that actually has an opposite angle of observation or is a mirror image of the lead with ST elevation. Another case would be when the injury currents are not strong enough to be detected in leads with an opposite angle of observation. In the third case, uh, where we could see this or not see uh, the reciprocal ST depression are when the vectors, the other vectors interfere with the injury currents and prevent them from being detected by leads with an opposite angle of observation. Okay, so what are some common pitfalls we can run into? Well, acute transmural ischemia located in the posterior lateral wall of the left ventricle does not lead to ST elevation on the standard 12 lead EKG. This is because none of the conventional leads are able to detect the injury currents, and instead we will see reciprocal ST depression often in leads V1 through V3, our right-sided precordial leads. This is also true in acute transmural ischemia of the right ventricle because it can be missed if only the standard 12 leads are used. Instead, the right-sided chest leads V4R and V5R should be used and placed on the patient. All right, so let's briefly review what we discussed here before we end, okay? So we're looking at ischemic ST depression and ST elevation. 
So first with the ischemic ST depression, okay, we said it can be horizontal or downsloping, okay, the horizontal where it's flat, downsloping, it's coming down, upsloping, all right, is not commonly uh, a sign of ischemia, okay. Now we also mentioned that the EKG criteria where we had that new horizontal or downsloping ST depression of at least 0.5 millimeters, so that's half a small box and at least two anatomically contiguous leads. Remember in STEMI, if we see these ischemic ST depression, these are secondary changes because they're the recipient changes, okay, or the mirror image of the ST elevation. In terms of the end STEMI or unstable angina, they would be more primary ischemic changes, okay, and they're often associated with T wave inversion or flat uh, T waves, okay. Now, upsloping ST depression, as we said, rarely indicates ischemia, except if there's tall T waves in most of the precordial leads, where we'll see this is called de Winter sign, okay, and it may suggest a left anterior descending occlusion. Now, it's normal during exercise and normal if there are no T wave inversions associated with it. Now, in terms of ischemic ST elevation, we said it could be convex, it could be straight upsloping, straight horizontal, or straight downsloping, okay? It's rarely concave ST elevation, but it does not rule it out, okay? We mentioned a number of EKG criteria that are listed here for the ischemic changes of ST elevation, okay? So again, they're based on age and sex, new ST elevation, and at least two anatomically contiguous leads, and then you can see them all here listed. I won't go through them again, okay? And again, another thing that can suggest ischemia is this J point close to the height of the T wave apex, as we saw with this horizontal ST elevation, notice that, okay, about at the same height. And again, this ischemic ST elevation is often associated with those reciprocal ST depression signs, right? Secondary ischemic ST depression, okay? And that suggests transmural ischemia, but remember these reciprocal changes may also be absent, okay? So if you look here, some of those common pitfalls, that's when we would not see ST elevation on the normal standard 12 lead EKG, but there's still ischemia present, okay? Some cases would be posterolateral ischemia, okay? Where in such cases you see reciprocal ST depression in the right precordial leads V1 through V3, okay? In this case, you'd wanna use those posterior leads, put them on the back and see ST elevation in V7 through V9. In terms of right ventricular ischemia, same thing. The standard 12 lead EKG won't pick it up all the time, okay? So in this case, put those leads, the chest leads on the right side, and you'll see ST elevation in those right side of leads, V4R, V5R, uh, and even V6R you can put it on. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed ST elevation and depression in myocardial ischemia, including various ST segment morphologies, EKG criteria, and common pitfalls. I hope you learned something.